Hi guys, Penny Rose Journals, how you doing? Um, I have something quite special to share with you guys today. Um, this is a little booklet, um, circa World War II. Um, this actually belonged to my grandfather. Um, I found it in amongst some of my things the other day. And I was just intrigued by the way it was put together and... Um, yeah, a little bit emotional if <laughs> the truth be told. But um, yeah, I had a look through it and I thought I would like to make something similar. Um, of course, this is part of my history. So um, yeah, it's a bit personal to me and I won't be pulling it apart and putting it in journals. <laughs> but I would like a record of it. Um, that I can use for for journaling so um, I thought I would make somewhat of a reproduction of this and um, see if I can make it look similar to what I have here um, yeah it's an interesting little booklet um, of course it's full of like technical detail and um, letters and you know that sort of thing charts and um, yeah, medical charts and stuff, but um, which I won't bother to reproduce. I mean, the one I'm making for a journal is literally for a journal. It's not supposed to be an actual reproduction of this. It's just an idea of this. Um, I will probably leave the pages inside blank so that they can be journaled on. Um, but yeah, I thought I would like to put something together that represented this um, so yeah let's sort of have a go I've got those um, green suspension folders that I had sitting out in the sun and I thought that would be a nice um, sort of cover um, material for it and I may use some of my coffee dyed papers for the inside so yeah well um we'll try and make something that looks similar I mean obviously I don't have stamps that are the same as the stamps and the, the you know, writing and whatnot in here but um, I'm going to see if I can get the same look with what I have so just a bit of fun really and something that will look hopefully by the end um, quite vintagey which yeah <laughs> of course appeals to most of us. <laughs> now, I have not actually made a prototype of this um, prior to starting the video so um, this is me working it out in real time um, so there's a few blunders and whatnot and changes as I go but um, yeah, you'll get to see the whole process. <laughs> This is not going to end up being exactly the same size as the original document. Um, that is not an issue for me. I do not require it to be exactly the same as the original document in any way. I just want the feel.
The way this is constructed, these are the first two pages of the uh, little booklet. Um, half of the second page has been perforated and pulled out. Now, at first I thought I could just perforate it enough with this little wheel, but um, my little wheel is very cheap and nasty and was picked up from a um, second-hand store and wobbles around and generally makes a mess. So in the end, I will end up using my... Um, uh, my hair thinning scissors to just cut out the, the section that um, I want to look like was perforated and torn so but um, for now this is <laughs> where we're at <laughs> I definitely do not have a suitable piece of paper that is this long so um, I'll just use a bit of artistic license and um, use a shorter piece here. Um, there will still be plenty of journal space in here I don't think, you know, like I say this is just an idea um, that's supposed to resemble the booklet. I'm not trying to you know, copy it exactly so um, yeah. We'll go and fetch a piece of paper and uh, get this page organised as well.
and this back page is again made from the card so I will use a bit more of that folder and um, create a back page Okay, I am just going to um, staple this onto the back um, of our little stack of folded papers now and we will have our basic construction. So it's an interestingly constructed little booklet. The, um, the front two pages are the cover and then there's pages on the inside but each one is sort of individual from all the others. Um, yeah they're they're folded in a way and then um tucked in and then all just stapled at the spine so yeah it's a very interesting little construction and um that's one of the reasons i wanted to to try and sort of emulate it because it's just something a bit different um i will probably make some more of these um along the way not today but um and now I know what I'm doing. It will probably be a much less painful looking process. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry you guys had to sit through it. But um, yeah, um, I know a lot of people are very um, organized and do a prototype and, um, you know, basically have one constructed and know what they're doing before they start a video. But um, yeah, I... I I worry to be honest that I will take the time out to make a prototype and then I'll run out of time to make a video so that's why <laughs> that's why you guys get to see the whole process most of the time um yeah um so I kind of do the whole thing on camera so um it's a learning curve for all of us I'm sorry to say <laughs> If I do do them again, I will film it so you can actually watch something that looks a little more, more um, professional, I guess. <laughs> but thanks for bearing with me and um, watching me build this. Now that it's all built, we will start thinking about decorating it so that it looks a little bit like the, um, the original. But uh, we have our basic construction and I hope that you guys could follow that well enough to um, sort of understand what what I've done. Um, 
on the original all the corners are rounded so I've decided to round the corners on this one as well um, of course then I'm going to straighten up the top and I'm going to have to go back and round them again but that's beside the point <laughs> the point is I'm rounding the corners even the ones that are in the folds of the inside papers so um, yeah it's just how the other, the first one was constructed and I thought it looked quite interesting so that's what I've done This is where I decide to use my hair thinning scissors to cut that piece out um, so that it looks like it's been perforated and I just make it a strip in the middle so that there is a um, basically just a, a, a strip missing and then there's a top and bottom flap still left um, just because I felt like doing it that way. This did work and um, yeah I'm happy with the way it looks but in hindsight I would possibly have done this before I stapled it together just because it would be easier um, yeah, <laughs> if it wasn't in the book to hack away at it but yes um, it worked out okay and looks quite effective. Now despite not having you know, obviously all the correct wording and the correct stamps and whatnot to make this exactly as the um, original was, I think I do a fairly good um, approximation of it with what I have. Um, some of the, the small word stamps that I have are in German. Um, <laughs> there's, there's no rhyme or reason to the words I use or the phrases I use on this to be honest. It's just what I had that looked like it was something like the original and um, yeah I'm just going to hunt through my stamps and find things that I think are most appropriate for the job and yeah we will stamp and yeah I'm sure it will be fine in the end <laughs> Thank you. 
as a bit of a tribute to my grandfather, um, I write his name and um, serial number here on the booklet, the same as they were on the original. Um, but you could jot down anything you wanted. So I just copied what I had in front of me. I didn't have a little word stamp that was an appropriate size to fit in this frame so um, yeah I just masked off the end of the frame with a, a piece of scrap there and um, stamped the little words that I had um, yeah, in the box and it worked out looking okay. Now for the stamped section um, on the front cover, I do not have a purple ink pad so I will stamp in red and it looks just fine. I don't have um, a line stamp as such so I'm just going to use the side of a um, old card and uh, make a few lines with that so yeah it looks similar to the uh, original.
As you can see, all these pages are various documents, um, identifications and whatnot. Um, I am just going to leave the ones in our little um, copy blank so that they can be journaled on. So, yeah. It's basically just there as a bit of a decoration. <laughs> so, um, I don't do too much more to this. Um, you could decorate the inside of the back cover as well. There is some wording in there from the folders, the suspension folders, and it is upside down. So, um, yeah, possibly as I go forward, I might consider covering that up and um, making things a bit more decorative in the back. But for now, I'm really pleased with this little um, copy. It's quite practical to put into a journal. It's quite slim. Um, it has quite a lot of writing space and it looks very effective. So, yeah, I'm very happy with it. And um, I hope you guys have also enjoyed having a look at it. Um, I'm just going to cover that bit of printing with a bit of coffee dyed paper so that yeah, it's not got an old banking account detail business on the bottom of it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we will sort that out and then we are all finished. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I've actually quite enjoyed making it. Um, like I say, I will probably do more um, in the future. So yeah, watch out for them. Um, I will be making sort of other reproductions of other documentation that I've found um, over the next few weeks. Um, yeah, so if you're liking that kind of thing, there will be a few more of them um, as I pull things out of a box and try and copy them for um, a journal. So, yeah. There we have it, guys. Thanks so much for being here and watching me fumble my way through this. And um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll be here for the rest of the series. So <laughs> thanks very much, guys. Bye.